This is a UK review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. Hey there, welcome to the video. Now on this channel, we focus on being a creative, a filmmaker, or an audio producer. And if you're one of those people, you'll probably have a massive iMac, a PC, or a very expensive laptop that you use to video edit or produce your content on. So many of us are very interested in very small and lightweight devices. So I really like to cover these on the channel. This is potentially a device that you can take with you on your travels, on the go, or maybe Maybe you leave your iMac or PC at the office or studio and you want just a small computer to have in the home. But more importantly, it's got to get a little bit of work done. And that's why on the channel I focus a lot on iPads, iPad Pros and the Surface lineup. So this is the new Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. So Microsoft seemed to be aiming this squarely at students and pretty young students too. But you know, I was pretty interested in this laptop because it's got a really nice design. It's got a 12.5 inch display. And to be honest, I think it looks pretty good. So I'm looking for a lightweight travel device that can get some work done. So could this be it with the Microsoft Surface Go? Now, before we get into the tech specs, this is the 699, 699 pounds here in the UK. It does start at 549 pounds for a 64 gigabyte model, but I think most people should skip that model because you get only 64 gigabytes of memory, you only get four gigs of RAM, and you don't get the fingerprint sensor. Spend a little bit more and you'll get much faster SSD with 128 gigs of storage, you'll get eight gigabytes of RAM, and you'll get that really important fingerprint scanner so you can log into your Windows system with ease. But anyway, let's take a look at the Surface Laptop Go. The Surface Laptop Go is a beautifully designed machine, very similar to its bigger brother, the Surface Laptop, but for a lot less money. The build quality on this device is excellent, and to be honest, I was surprised by how premium it feels for the price. It has a full metal lid and interior, so it feels much more expensive than I expected. It really has the high-end looks you'd expect from the Surface lineup, and it weighs just 1.1 kilograms, so it's a very light device to carry around. On the sides of the device, you have a regular USB port, a USB-C port, and a headphone socket. On the right-hand side, you have the Surface connector for charging. I personally think it's a great thing that Microsoft have included both USB and USB-C. It means you get the future whilst also being able to connect older devices too. And I think this is something that Apple should have really done for the first gen of their USB-C enabled laptops. Now, when you open up the device, you're greeted with an excellent full-sized keyboard, a nice sized trackpad, and a fingerprint scanner if you go for this model. The keyboard is a joy to type on. I've used it for many, many hours of typing now, and I've got to say, it's really nice. The trackpad, whilst a little small, works very, very well. So no complaints for me there. I was, however, a little disappointed to learn that there's no Windows Hello camera. However, the fingerprint scanner is fast and it works great. And it also has this little cool light on it, which I think looks great when you open up the machine. Now, the screen is a 12.4 inch full touchscreen display. However, it does not support the Surface Pen. Whilst its colors look great, it's only a resolution of 1536 by 1024, which by 2020 standards isn't fantastic. It makes it quite a low resolution compared to an iPad, a Surface Laptop, or a MacBook Pro. Now, to be honest, I don't think most people would notice as it is a very colorful, bright and sharp screen. But if you do look closely, you can see some pixels. And I think it would have been nice if Microsoft had offered an option to maybe upgrade the screen. But it certainly doesn't mean that this is a bad laptop at all. Given the price, it's still a really good display and most people wouldn't even notice. It comes with an Intel 10th gen processor and eight gigabytes of RAM in this model. So how does this laptop perform in the real world? I sometimes think if you go for a budget end laptop, they can end up being very sluggish and you don't really get what you paid for. 
This, however, I've got to say, actually feels really, really good. I was expecting it to be a little bit slow, but actually it's pretty fast. I've been doing a lot of word processing on it, uh, a bit of web development, and I've been watching videos on YouTube in 60 frames per second, and it doesn't seem to struggle at all. Now with the Surface Go, you know, the more tablet version of the Surface lineup, it couldn't run Adobe Premiere Pro at all. It could run Photoshop, but not too well. It was very, very slow. So I put Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop on this just to test it out. I didn't think it was gonna run that well. And actually, surprisingly, you can edit video on this machine. Now, if you wanna see some full tests on Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro, check out the link in the description or click the link up here and check out the videos on the channel because I'm gonna do a full look at this because I think it's quite an interesting thing to know that a, a 12 inch laptop can actually run Premiere Pro. Now, as you'll see in that video, um, it's not gonna replace your full video editing laptop. You wouldn't expect it to, but it does mean that you can get some quick edits done on the go. Now, the keyboard on the laptop is really, really nice. It's got a nice typing experience, a nice amount of travel, a good trackpad, and really I was honestly quite impressed. I thought the keyboard might be a little bit cramped, but actually it doesn't feel that much different to my 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is really nice to see. The speakers on the device are okay. You know, they're quite loud, but they are a little bit tinny. There's not much bass in the speakers. Battery life has been pretty good as well. Um, I've used it all day from about 9.30 to 10 a.m. in the morning to about 5 p.m. and it still had about 20% of charge left, which is really, really good. I wasn't really overworking it, but it got me through the full day, which is really great to see. Now, one thing in 2020, which is super important, is the webcam. If you're gonna be working from home, if this is a travel device, you're probably gonna to need to get on Microsoft Teams uh, or a Skype call, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at the webcam and see if the quality is any good. Okay, so this is a test with the built-in microphones and webcam of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. Now, it's only 720p, which is a little disappointing because in all of the other Surface laptops, you do get a full HD webcam, which is extremely good quality. But you know, overall, I think this is pretty good. And if you're gonna be in some kind of lockdown or working from home, I think this webcam is pretty good. But just for comparison's sake, Let's jump over to my 3,000 pound MacBook Pro just so you can see a difference between the two. Okay, so we're now on my MacBook Pro and I'm just doing this for a comparison so you can see the difference in the webcam video quality and the microphone quality. We're using the inbuilt microphones of the MacBook Pro just so you can see the difference between a very budget laptop from Microsoft to a very expensive MacBook Pro. Now, Side by side, as I'm recording these, I'm actually quite impressed with the Surface Laptop Go, but what do you think? Which quality do you prefer? Are you surprised by the Surface Laptop Go, or are you surprised by the MacBook Pro? Let me know in the comment section below. So overall, what do I think of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go? I've got to say, I really, really like it. Now, for the money, 699, which I think is the one if you're here in the UK that you want to start with, you know, it doesn't make it the cheapest laptop in the world. And of course, for that money, you probably could get a much better spec laptop. But if you are the kind of person who's looking for a second laptop, maybe you have a 13 or 15 inch laptop, you know, why, why go and get another 13 inch laptop? You probably want something that's a bit more baggable, you know, something you can put in your bag and travel with, or you just want something you can sit on the sofa with, you can and watch Netflix on, that kind of thing. For that, I think this is very, very good. I've got a few friends who have the 12 inch MacBook and obviously that's been discontinued now. So this would be a great option for them. And what's nice about this is that it has the older USB ports and USB-C. So uh, if you are a student and this is what it seems to be aimed at, it is gonna be good for the classroom too. So if you're going to university, um, you know, you're gonna be able to use USB dongles, plug in microphones, that kind of thing. So overall, I think this is a very good laptop. I really do like it, you know, um, I've paid for this out of my own money. So, you know, these are all my honest opinions. But I think if you're looking for a laptop that looks good, that feels good, and you know, it's made by Microsoft, so it's gonna run Windows 10 really, really well. It's been optimized for it, you can tell. I actually think it's a pretty good machine for the money. But let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of this laptop? Do you think it's too expensive? Were you expecting more or maybe less from this? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, remember to check out the videos we've got coming soon for the Surface Laptop Go, where we're gonna see if you can run Photoshop and Premiere Pro on this little machine. So keep a lookout for that. 
and I'll see you in the next video.